Hey friends, so here we are with the Bagua Jam class notes episode number 32. Uh, let's get straight into it. Uh, warm up. This time we um, did a shorter warm up, not preparing so much legs and hips and lower body, but working with a, two variations of, um, you could call it, um, silk reeling exercises. The first one is this one here that you see where I throw out my arm into a 45 degree angle. Uh, it is very helpful to imagine that you are uh, holding on to a rope with a big knot at the end so your arm becomes really heavy and you throw it out to the side, you rotate your hand and then what you focus on is the connection of your hip to your elbow. So it's your hip moving, the hip drives the motion of the arm and when the hip pulls back you can imagine the connection uh, between your hip and your elbow. So the hip is pulling at the elbow and moving the arm back towards your center. You first do that on uh, each hand before you combine and you work with both hands simultaneously. Um, very nice exercise and it's very also nice if you let go or you put you shift your weight a little more forward to the balls of your feet so your heels can lift which makes the whole exercise uh, even more smooth and uh, yeah and it's it's just a very nice exercise to warm up the upper body get a sense for rotation and forces also use uh, or get also a sense and awareness of the uh, connection of your hips and your arms and elbows specifically. So this is the first one. It's slightly forwarded in tempo, um, just because the data is just growing wild on my hard drive now, uh, making it a little shorter to save some data. Now the second one is this one here, uh, where you first move your arm from the outside to the inside, moving up with your fingertips, then with your elbow, and, lay, and then with the center of your palm, pressing towards the ceiling. Also same here, you first move one arm, so starting off with the right arm here, and then moving to the left side before we combine and work with both arms simultaneously. It's a very nice shoulder uh, warm-up, uh, as well as a whole body uh, movement that feels really nice um, kind of a dragon-like spinal tickling that you get when you practice this exercise. Again, the feet are quite loose, especially when you practice the um, combined version with both hands, where you practice with both hands simultaneously. So uh, don't keep the form too rigid, um, but make it a very enjoyable exercise. And you can go very long with that. Uh, so the, here it just serves as a warm-up, um, half a minute, minute or so, that should be sufficient. This exercise is actually a tiny little part of the Oolong Byway from the bigger frame uh, Xian Tian circle walking uh, palm changes and it's just taking out of that and uh, moving it into the warm-up section of our practice session here. And now we continued with this uh, upper, you could call it an upper body exercise, but as you see, the whole body is uh, integrated from the feet up. And it's also uh, an extract from one of our Ho Tian palms, the straight line forms, namely Li Zhang from the first line, movement number five, and it's also a very good uh, exercise to move your shoulder girdle and uh, connect it to your center and also down from the fingertips down to your feet actually as almost everything or everything in Bakuja. Okay, so um, as I said before, now we used a lot of upper body warm-up exercises and um, we didn't 
bend or move our knees and legs through the full range of motion. So in this class, I told the students that they should use the circle walking exercise with all the palm changes they already know in order to warm up and get a sense for their body or the status of their body, the status of the joints, the status of the tissue and everything. And they, that they should use the palm changes that they practiced before in order to um, to check in with their body, okay? So usually when we practice the palm changes, we go for the full range of motion. So as I've, I've practiced here, you know, with the dragon palm change, I just move through it because I'm usually warmed up and I sit very low. I, I bend my knees fully. I extend my spine, extend my arms, shoulders, and everything is in full range of motion. And um, that's usually the case when you're, you're warmed up. And um, another suggestion would be to, if you use that circle walking exercise in order to warm up, in order to check in with your body, you should attempt the palm changes a little bit more carefully in order to not run into any surprises. Okay, so you want to be um, walking the circle and um, maybe reducing the range of motion of each palm change just so that you can feel comfortably, comfortable doing it so for example here I, I demonstrate the same palm change again the dragon but i only squat halfway down okay this would be a way to check in with your body how do you how does your body feel today are you ready for it and then turn and then just step out sorry for that my own screen time no limits today yes okay so up down and here again i only squat halfway down check in Okay, feels okay, nice. So in the next palm change that I practice, I can go for the full range because I know I'm ready for it that day. Yes, so uh, also a nice exercise and we took 15 minutes to get ourselves warmed up with this specific uh, focus on checking in with our body through the palm changes that everybody already practiced. Now, after the circle walking, we added another um, another method or another posture of our Bamujang. Um, in this case, it's um, the Tuoqiang Shi, the supporting spare posture. Also, Shi Zi Zhang Kou, the lion opens its mouth. That's the, the names for it. And uh, so today was just the very first introduction of this posture, and we've practiced this in a very... Um, unspecific way okay just getting the first rough shape in and the changes and how you change sides when you do the circle walking so as you see there's one hand pointing towards the center uh, palm up roughly uh, pointing towards the center of your circle the other hand is uh, lifted and pressing with the palm towards the front hand again we will talk about details later on. This is just uh, about learning the rough shape of the exercise. Tuo Qiang Shi or Shi Zi Zhang Kou. That's the names again. Okay, so here when you want to change directions, you basically do that with a simple Kobu step. You, you lower your hands, you let them sink, move through the other side, step one more time, and then you bring your arms in, back into the circle, pointing again towards the center. That's a very nice method again of Bamujang. Uh, about detail, we will talk about the details later on in later sessions. Okay, that's Tuo Qiang Shi. And uh, again, we've practiced or we practice this uh, right now in class at the end of our regular circle walking practice. So let's say 15 minutes of circle walking with all the palm changes and then adding another five minutes right now, always changing. You know, I'm walking here like 30 seconds to a minute only because right now only the rough shape matters and only the change of direction matters. Later on, when we focus more on the internal details, we will want to hold the, the posture for longer periods of time so we can actually have we actually have a space where we can notice things and become aware of uh, internal structure, alignment, breathing, and so on. 
Okay, so rough shape only for today. Uh, one more time. Let's see the change here. Kobo and then lowering the hands, stepping forward and moving the hands back towards the center of the circle and move again. Okay, so that was the first part of the class and uh, took about 45 minutes or so before we added another short practice session of the first Ho Tian line uh, in the linking version. Um, here we go. So we've practiced this over the cu last couple of weeks uh, quite frequently and we're still in the phase where it's all about learning coordinations so people can walk through the form without thinking about the form. That's always the first step, you know, you have to sew, sew the things together and if you really want to enjoy the benefits of, of this uh, linking forms, you have to be able to run through it uh, blindfolded. Okay, you don't, you don't want to think about the next move and the next move, where should I put my right foot, where should I put my left foot? No, you should be able to, to do it and run through it without thinking so you can actually focus on your movement qualities and also work on um, training and conditioning yourself with this form. Yeah, so this is still the, the phase where we actually still learn the form and next week we will dive into uh, Ho Tian line number two while we still keep working on the linking form of line number one. Uh, we continued with um, partner practice as um, we often do it. We start with Rosho practice just to get uh, used to the work with a partner. It's kind of a warming up to work with a partner. Um, and here we've practiced fixed step. Uh, both sides as well as moving steps and with the focus on not crossing your legs when moving through the, f through, the through space okay so you always want to uh, keep a wide stance uh, in general you also want to avoid changing your legs uh, changing your stance changing your your front leg because that always leaves you vulnerable for takedowns then we added takedowns and um, more specifically we added takedowns from our first line Pong Zhang which you see here uh, 1.2 uh, where you pull the um, arm out and move into a double leg takedown situation or into this kind of takedown here where you simply block the um, the leg and you you bump into the hip with your shoulder so that was the first um, exercise that we did practicing Pong Zhang and the takedowns from Rou Shou, which is usually quite fun and especially when you do it a little faster um, yesterday we've practiced it in such a way that we had no contact moved into contact into a Sancho situation, uh, Rosho, and then from there we took only like two to five seconds to get down to the takedown, okay? Because here it's important that after we learn the basic move, that we also learn to make it uh, available quicker to our body. So starting and immediately moving into the takedown. Take a maximum of five seconds, otherwise you're just simply too slow. Uh, and slowly increase the pressure so that you can at one point perform it immediately once you get in touch with the hands of your partner. But it's incremental um, development so take your time with that. The other thing uh, afterwards was the practice of Chan Shou Shi the, or Chan Shou Zhang, the Chan Shou Zhang, uh, the eighth um, form of our first line which is called the entwining hands um, it's really about winding up your uh, opponent and in this case catching the incoming kick uh, moving forward immediately with a strike so you can block the incoming punch from your opponent and then because you are in a single leg takedown position you can take various takedowns not necessarily from Bagua whatever you learned before um, here you see the cradle we had the treetop we have different uh, different variations of takedowns that we simply add from the um, from the position where we used Chan Shou in order to uh, wrap up the leg of our opponent and get hold of the leg. Okay, so very important here is, as I said after this, never drop your hands before you uh, before you 
move into that uh, situation here because your partner or your kicking opponent will absolutely hit your face straight away because usually no one kicks in isolation but when they kick they also strike so it's extremely important that you always have your hands up and once your opponent kick immediately bring your hand forward in order to save your head from some serious damage okay keep your hands up then wind up the leg and move forward into a takedown whichever you like so like here kind of a treetop takedown or a classic jiu-jitsu takedown where you step like here to the back or another one which is the cradle where you where you lift the leg of your or you pull the leg and then lift the leg of your partner okay so that was um, yesterday night's Bhagwajan class, class notes number 32. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe rewatch the video if you want to practice some of the applications. And as per usual, send me your questions and feedback. Speak soon.